Um, so I thought I'd start off actually just by saying um, a few things about um, the value of the um, IPCC reports and, uh, and their role in terms of helping inform um, taking action, and then I'll come on to address some of the um, questions that, um, that were posed. So the, the first thing I wanted to say is that, um, so, we, so you, you might, and this came up I think a little bit in the last panel, you might think that 30 years, which is almost where we are after the first IPCC report, do we, re, you know, what is the value of yet more IPCC um, reports? And I'll, I'll, I actually think that they are almost more valuable now than they ever were, and I'll give you one key reason why. I, I spent this morning at the CBI conference um, down at the, uh, just next door to the um, O2 uh, arena, and uh, the essentially the major theme of this year's CBI conference was climate change. Um, there was a speech by Boris Johnson, a speech by Jeremy Corbyn, then Joe Swinson, and then their keynote speech, which is probably happening about now, is uh, Christina Figueres. And, um, and I was sitting on a, on a panel at, at lunchtime, and uh, business, you know, key leaders of business um, in, in the audience, and they all said, oh, the last 12 months have been a complete change. We've seen people out on the streets, but more importantly in the business community, climate change and addressing climate change is now on our radar in a way that it wasn't before. And what do they attribute that to? They attribute it to the 1.5 report from last year. Um, and, and why was that so important? Well, in a way, I think it's for some of the reasons that you introduced, Richard, in, in, the, uh, in your slides at the start there. I think the key thing in the 1.5 report, which wasn't there perhaps in previous IPCC reports, was the sense of urgency. Um, the sense that this isn't an end of century issue, that it's a next decade issue in terms of the decisions and the actions that organizations like those represented at the CBI conference need to take. And I think that that um, has been incredibly powerful. So. No, I really do think that there is value in, in, in continuing to put effort into writing these um, IPCC reports. Um, there are still plenty of questions in terms of people wanting to make decisions around climate change where we still don't have um, the full evidence base in order to help them. Um, so I would point, for example, to the granularity of information that's relevant to making decisions on the ground. Um, an awful lot of the um, climate science that we've undertaken to date has been around global averages, which in answering the question, is the climate changing and is that changed largely due to human activities, um, is uh, obviously a, a key um, metric to look at. But if you're wanting to understand um, what, what the impact of climate change on your business is, then you really do need to understand the impacts at a local level, and in particular, not the average conditions, but the extreme conditions, because those are the ones that are likely to have the most impact. So I would suggest that there's still um, a lot of basic research that's needed to be undertaken in order to help um, provide the evidence base for um, taking action. Not to say that that action shouldn't be taken now, but to, to help particularly, for example, in understanding how to build resilience to climate change and adapt, there are still critical questions. Um, what about new directions that we, other new directions that we need to um, be looking at expanding in terms of the evidence base? Well, I think some of them, um, again, came up in the last panel, um, questions about trade-offs, unintended consequences, the effectiveness of different policies, all of these require underpinning um, science associated with them. So then turning to my own organization, University of Cambridge, what's the University of Cambridge doing in the face of, um, of all this uh, uh, evidence? Well, well, again, I think as with many organizations, the university has recognized that um, they have a role to step up and take a, a global um, leadership uh, on this issue. And so we are just next week launching Cambridge Zero, which I'm the director of, which is a hugely ambitious new program in the university. Um, spanning essentially in the entire university, bringing together researchers from engineering and science, but through to the lawyers and philosophers um, in a very ambitious program, um, all addressed at helping support the delivery of a zero carbon world. Not just looking at the research portfolio, but just also looking at our educational 
offerings? Are we training up the next generation of leaders with the skills that they will really require to navigate through the coming decades? And then looking at um, our external engagement, recognizing that it's all very well creating ideas and innovations within the university, but unless they're rapidly deployed out into, into the real world, consistent on a time scale that, that's consistent with the scale of the challenge we've just been seeing, then we're not going to be helping to tackle the, um, the, uh, this grand challenge. And then finally, we're also looking at our own um, carbon footprint. Um, so what can we, how can we decarbonize the university itself? And some of that is about looking at our estate. How can we um, take gas out of our, our, our estate, for example? Not straightforward. Um, but it's also about the behavior of our, of our own academics um, and, and indeed students. So what can we do to help support our academics um, fly less? Can we start to lead the way in terms of virtual conferences so that we don't have to fly across the world um, in order to collaborate properly, um, and so forth. So I think the overwhelming um, experience that I have had, I've been um, in this role for um, six months or so now, the overwhelming experience um, is actually a really positive one. I've spent the last however many decades, a couple of decades, working um, as a climate scientist, feeling as though I've been working on the problem side of this. And uh, the last six months have actually been quite inspiring because I feel I've been switched around working on the solution side. Um, and, uh, and the amount of energy, enthusiasm, and excitement um, of people around Cambridge in terms of seeing what they can do. How can we change from um, a, a, essentially a nightmare vision of the future to helping to shape uh, a, a positive future that we might actually want to leave as a legacy of future generations? It's actually really quite inspiring. Um, so, there we go. Okay, thank you, Anna. Anna, uh, fabulous perspective.